I love you, you love me, we're a happy. It's been a long day without you, my friend. Now, I seriously hope those two songs don't get copyrighted or don't get this video copyrighted. So this is the last video in my True Best Friend Horror Stories uh, series. <laughs> so um, what is a best friend? Put it in your comments below. What is your best friend's name? For me, what is friendship? For me, friendship or a best friend um, is someone that you don't really have to know for a very long time, I, I realize. Some people, like in the stories I'm about to tell you, they could be your friends for a very long time, but if they bully you, harass you, make you feel bad about yourself and step on you. Are those people really your friends or are they people just around you? Same goes with family as well, I realize. People around you for a very long time don't, don't always end up as your closest people. For me personally, my best friends in life um, always happened, always happened when I was at kind of a low point, you know? Um, I realize a lot of my friends, the best ones I've ever made, are always the ones that we can share our worst things with each other. <laughs> of course, besides laughing and joking around, we can tell each other our flaws and our biggest problems, our deepest secrets, our most effed up things. And um, a lot of times I made these friends by being in the same tragic situation as the other person. I guess these kind of tragedies help bond people. Um, so you guys have like a common enemy and a thing to talk about. Um, I realized that's how I made my best friends. Uh, once you guys are in the same situation, you express your feelings, your your, your insecurities, your yeah, being fragile in front of each other, and then you guys connect. That's how I feel the best relationships in life are made. Uh, especially friendships. Especially, in my opinion, guy-to-guy -guy friendships. Because um, I don't know about girls, uh, but most guys, we have this like soldier kind of mindset, like as a team, as a group kind of thing. You do something together, you build something together, you go out and you hustle and you conquer things, you know? So with common problems and common common obstacles you have to face, uh, it really builds a friendship. And of course, talking about them uh, in your downtime, um, about the insecurities you have about those problems, many times creates even a deeper, best friendship. So without further ado, uh, let's end the series now. Uh, I know a lot of you guys like this best friend horror stories, but let's end at number 10. And um, that's how I'm going to end most of my series, I feel. Like, number 10 is, is should be enough. So without further ado, let's um, grab a blanket, turn off your lights for true scary best friend horror stories. Why I avoid my childhood best friend. After the events that took place when I was eight years old, things went back to normal for my friends and I. The guy who had tormented us was gone, and we were pretty much safe again. This continued until we finished primary school. When this happened, we didn't see each other very much, apart from a few who went to the same school as me. Up until that point, my best friend was Jake. He ended up going to a different school, so we only ever saw each other twice since we finished school. When we were both 13 years old, we had moved on and weren't friends anymore. So one day when I was 13 or 14, I met up with an old friend. His name was Ethan. He had also been friends with Jake. When we met up, we decided to go to a large park that was located between our houses. We walked, went on the swings for a while, but left after a girl started shouting at us. We walked to the basketball court close to the exit as we made our way towards Ethan's house. This area was surrounded by thick bushes and trees that are easy to hide in, so we had no idea what was going to happen. We weren't paying much attention to our surroundings as we had a lot to catch up on. We didn't notice a group of mass people dressed completely in black approaching us until it was too late. We were surrounded and we saw that they were all armed with kitchen knives. There were six or seven of them surrounding us when one of them spoke. He demanded all of our money and our phones. He said that they, they would kill us if we refused or tried anything. His voice sounded familiar, and when I got a better look at him, I realized that it was Jake. I don't think he recognized me, because he pointed his knife right at me and demanded our stuff again. 
At this point, Ethan had also realized who it was. Simultaneously, we both told him who we were. He looked at us for a second, and then he pulled his mask off and greeted us. He told us that I hadn't changed much before telling us that we were lucky and to get out of there. We started to walk away, and as we reached the exit, we turned and saw them running into the bushes. Freaked out, we ran to Ethan's house and didn't leave for a few hours. When it came time for me to leave, I ran straight home avoiding the park. I saw him again after that, but I always avoided him. I almost never went out on my own again for the next few years. So, my childhood best friend who was like a brother to me almost mugged me. If he hadn't realized who we were, things could have been very different. The people with him seemed pretty ready to stab us, even if we did what they wanted. He had screwed me over and dragged me into bad things before this, but I can't forgive him, even though he let us go. He wasn't exactly a good person to begin with, but this was way too far. I did recently hear that he has turned his life around, but I'm done with him, and I hope I never see him again. Friends don't steal another friend's child. When I was around seven years old, my parents would always take me to a local grocery store and always ignore my complaints on how boring the trip was. Since there was nothing that caught my eye during these trips, I would always sit in those grocery carts and play with toys I bought from home while my parents went to different aisles to gather all the groceries that they needed. Obviously, it wasn't a smart idea to leave your seven-year-old alone in a grocery cart in the first place, but I was a very obedient child, and that part of town had a very peaceful and friendly atmosphere to it. Having my parents out of sight made me anxious at first, but I slowly grew accustomed to it once I realized that they would always come back to the cart after a few minutes. I just had to wait patiently. One day, my parents left me on the cart and didn't come back for quite a while. Now this would be usually the time when I would call, or I guess in my case, loudly proclaim how hungry I am for my parents to come back. But my parents brought me a Game Boy Advance a few days back, so I was too engrossed in whatever I was playing to even realize how much minutes had passed by. While I was waiting for my parents, a woman whom I'd never seen before seemed to notice that I was left alone for a while and decided to approach the cart. She lightly tapped my shoulder to get my attention away from my video game, which jolted me out of my trance. When I looked up at the woman, her face immediately formed into a huge grin, but I could tell it wasn't genuine. She began to ask random questions and tried to keep a conversation, but I refused to speak. I was a very shy child and always hated talking to adults who were not my parents. What's your name, sweetie? Silence. Aren't you bored sitting on that cart alone? More silence. Where are your parents? Again, silence. I never felt like I was in danger while the lady was talking my ear off because there have been many times when friends of my parents who live around the area would spot the cart I was in, wait with me, and also try to make small talk with me, which never worked out. Until one of my parents came back, which would lead to another very boring hour or so in the middle of the grocery store. Anyways, the woman eventually gave up small talk and began to push the cart and said, Why don't we look for your parents together? Again, I didn't say anything, since I assumed they were one of the millions of friends my mother or father had. We were near the market doors, until I noticed my father inside an aisle, carrying a bunch of items. I called out to him, and said something along the lines of, Dad, your friend wants to see you. When my dad looked up to where I was, his face paled when he saw the situation I was in, and just dropped everything he had in his arms and tried to rush over to the cart shouting my name. The woman at this point began freaking out and began to push the cart even faster. We were just out of the store and about halfway into the parking lot when she realized she could not outrun my dad if she kept on pushing the cart. In a complete panic, she let go of the cart and jumped into a car with a male driver before speeding off. It was obvious that she didn't give a shit for my safety. Now, here I was, at seven years old, 
in a grocery store, shopping cart screaming bloody murder as it rolled onto the street. I'm guessing there was a dent or something on the road, because the cart then fell on its side, which gave me massive scrapes and bruises to the left side of my body. Seconds later, I hear my dad swearing and quickly picking me up off the road, cradling me in his arms as I continued wailing. Eventually, cops were called, and my dad gave a statement. Unfortunately, he couldn't get the license plates of the car because he saw me fall onto the street and ran full force towards me, not even realizing the woman escaped with her companion. I had to get a few minor stitches and had a limp for a few days, but other than that, I, I was okay. Needless to say, my parents never took me to their boring grocery trips ever again. Edit. The grocery aisles were very narrow and could barely fit a cart. My parents didn't want to annoy people, so they just left the cart near the beginning of the aisle. Baskets were another choice, but they would be carrying a large amount of baskets just to fit the groceries they buy. Sorry for any confusion. Gross Childhood Friend I was young. Like, honestly, I can't tell you my age, but I was in the third grade when this all happened. I lived in a small town, and I rode the bus to and from school every day. You know, like most kids, through after a few years, a lot of getting bullied and feeling threatened, mom started driving me to and from. So when I was little, I met this girl on the bus. She was close to my age, but a bit younger. I'll call her Alice, mostly because I can't remember her name. She was a nice girl. We got along and only hung out on the school bus, never any other time. After some time, she wanted to introduce me to a boy she met and was friends with. We'll call him Dan. Now, he had to be, I'd say, in the seventh grade. So you have a boy about his teen years, hanging out with two girls ranging from, we'll say, five to eight years old? That's weird. He was an odd kid. He had buck teeth, lisp, very greasy black hair, tons of freckles, and beady black eyes. I rarely saw him with other kids his age on the bus. Just the two of us. For a good while, it was nice. I liked both of them. They were fun to talk to, and we always shared a seat on the bus. Well, suddenly around winter time, it got bad and creepy. One morning, I got on the bus, and they refused to let me sit with them. Alice was telling me I was dumb and ugly and couldn't sit with them, because Dan said so, and he pushed me and told me I was allowed to sit in front of them, so I did. I was confused, very anxious, and worried about what I had done to make my friends stop liking me. On the ride, he stole my hat I had been wearing and wouldn't give it back to me until the very last minute when I threatened to tell. They just spent days poking me, kicking the back of my seat, calling me stupid and gross and whispering things about me I couldn't make out. Now I figure we're perverse. So, after nearly a week of this creepy, manipulative shit they're smiling at me, I come on the bus and both of them are smiling and apologizing and saying I can sit with them. But I have to sit by the window and Dan had to sit next to me, I mean right next to me. He pressed himself against me as tightly as he could and had me pinned against the window, which was unsettling, and kept looking at me. I don't remember a lot of it, but I remember being very frustrated and upset. Then he started saying shit to me. He started talking about my boobs, and saying he wanted to put dynamite in my boobs and watch them blow up, and he wanted to stick some sort of weapon in my vagina, and he wanted to throw me off of a cliff, and kept, kept talking about my chest and my vagina. I mean, I'm a friggin' kid in third grade. I didn't know most of the shit he was talking about, but I knew it was private stuff. It scared me, and his breath smelled weird, and he was way, way too close to me. And Alice was laughing, and saying I was a bad friend and a chicken, because I was upset. And they said they didn't want to be my friend anymore, because I was ugly and had a gross vagina. By the time I got to the school, I was so in shock that I was mute the whole day. By the end of the school day, I did not want to leave. I just sat at my desk. My mom, thankfully, was going to pick me up. My teacher asked why I was so quiet, and I just broke out sobbing and screaming about how scared I was, and how I didn't want to be on the bus, 
and about my friends being mean, and I was scared to say anything. Oh, I just remember that part. Sorry, this is something I remember from time to time. Dan, being the sweet boy he was, told me that if I ever, ever in my whole life told anybody about the things he'd said to me, that he'd come to my house and kill my parents, my cats, and then he would do things to my vagina and my boobs, then stab me and set my body on fire eventually. So, in that moment, obviously, I told my teacher. I couldn't tell her his name or the girl's name. I really, as a small child, believed this shitty 13 or 14 year old boy who would do those things. So my mom came to pick me up. I'm freaked out. And when I see her, I'm crying and I throw myself at her and cling onto her leg and cry. And the teacher tells her what she knew. I finally said a, a boy on the bus said he would do things to my boobs and birds would take my eyes. And if I told his name, he'd kill my mom and all of that shit. So of course, they promised he wouldn't hurt anybody. And I finally told them the name. And of course, they both knew who I was talking about. Small towns, you know everybody. So... The teacher ended up contacting the middle school, and they contacted his parents. Last that I heard from Alice, who hated my guts, she gave me the death stares you see in Children of the Corn for the longest time. She told me that his parents were called into the school, and that eventually his parents beat him when they found out he had said that to me. And apparently, it was not the first time he threatened to sexually harm a small girl at school. So he was removed from school and sent off to a military school. So, Dan, you sick, demented piece of shit. I hope the worst things in the world have happened to you on your path of life, and that I never see your creepy, lispy face again, ever. Let's not meet.